didn't show mercy. And so God showed him that. Mm. Let's the, the fact that these people were placed under you. You never showed mercy. In other words, as believers, we should be merciful for others, to others so that God can be merciful to us as yes. well. Thank you very much, man. Thank you very much, man. I was particularly touched where you said you showed no mercy on the elderly. You laid your yoke very heavily. You know, this mm. reminds me of what a present day government does. And that is very, very bad. You know, you see, sometimes when you go to Lagos to buy some things, all of a sudden you, you know those people who carry their goods and wares on wheelbarrow. It is like um, all of a sudden something is chasing them. They will all carry their wheelbarrow and they will begin to run. Everybody will be running. Everybody will be running. Running from what? Running from the government that should help them find, help them find a place. Even when they receive no help, they put their wares, their goods on wheelbarrow and they're carrying it around, and yet they cannot sell that thing in peace. Most people cannot afford shops unless the government comes to their help. But I don't think the government is interested. You know, sometimes when we see elderly people, we talk about them, we talk them down, we abuse them, forgetting that we ourselves one day we get old. Nobody will remain young forever. At so all. when you a person and you, are, and you are abusing him or her, someday you will get old yourself. You know, I'm some are widows. The Bible talks about the plight of the widows, how we should be very, very careful and mindful of them. But you see that some people don't even care, especially in uh, villages and rural areas. But it's also the same that happens in the urban areas. We should be careful about these things. You know, it is very easy to think of Nebuchadnezzar as sitting up there, the king of Babylon, because he's a king. But in our own little, little ways, the way we react to people, the way we treat people, how kind are we? How, what love do we show? And these are the things that matter. We are all King Nebuchadnezzar in one way or the other, by how God has placed us. But just as Hubertson said, may God give us the grace to understand that whatever we are, whatever we have achieved in life, it is just by God's grace. Because at some point, it's like Nebuchadnezzar forgot that it is God that made him, made him strong. God, God could have chosen any of those nations, like Edom, like um, Ammon, like Judah. But it pleased God to just take Babylon. But we can see now that the same God who lifted Babylon so high and mighty, it's about to discipline Babylon, especially the leaders there. May this not happen to our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. And this is the instance of this study that we may not forget that we owe God everything. We should always humble ourselves before God. Let us read the rest of what happened to Babylon before we take more comments. Jeremiah 50, 8 to 16. I will take that, sir. Jeremiah 50, yeah. 8. Online, yeah. online. Yes, online, please. Yeah, okay. thank you. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, um, fifty. Fifty-eight to sixteen. Okay. But now, now flee from Babylon, leave the land of Babylonians, like milk goats at the head of the flock. Lead my people home again, for I'm raising up an army of great nations from the north. They will join forces to attack Babylon and she will be captured. The enemy's arrows will go straight to the mark. They will not miss. Babylonia will be looted until the attackers are gluted with loot. I, the Lord, have spoken. Verse 11. You rejoice and are glad, you who plundered my chosen people. You freaks about like a calf in a meadow and nay like a stallion, but your homeland will be overwhelmed with shame and disgrace. You will become the least of nations, a wilderness, a dry and desolate land because of the Lord's anger. Babylon will become a deserted water wasteland. All who pass by will be horrified and we gasp at the destruction they see there. Verse 14. Yeah. Yes, prepare to attack Babylon, all you surrounding nations. Let your archers shoot at her. Spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. 
shout to her Christ against her from every side. Look, she surrenders. Her words have fallen. It is a lost vengeance. So take vengeance on her. Do to her as she has done to others. Take from Babylon all those who plant crops. Send all the harvesters away because of the sword of the enemy. Everyone will run away and rush back to their own land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is horrific. May this not be a portion in the name of Jesus. Very, very May horrific. God give us lowly, uh, meek and contrite hearts to respond to his word so that we can escape this kind of um, vengeance, um, this kind of rot from God in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, mommy, you want to say something to the text? Hello. Yeah, just like, uh, yes, yes, sir. Just like all the other brethren have spoken, right? Yeah. We can see this is uh, God's judgment on Babylon because, you see, when God has blessed us, I'm trying to personalize it now, um, and let me leave Babylon yeah. now. When God has blessed us in our different ways, actually, when we're position of authority, maybe we're ahead of a place or we're, um, we're, we're heading a, a group of people, God has placed us there so that we be a blessing to those people. It's not as if we are the best, but he has seen us and uh, reposed a kind of confidence that we're gonna really uh, do his bidding there. That is showing love, helping people and not think that we, have a, we, have, we, have, we got there by our power. For instance, let me use our president. He's not the best in the whole country, but I believe that by the authority of God, he has come to that position. But God is now watching what he's doing if he's been so proud that, uh, yes, I'm now the president, or he's now feeling that, look, I can lord it over them, he has, there's a day judgment will come. And I know that Nigeria, we are waiting for that judgment because a lot, just like you said, a lot of people have been marginalized. Some people, uh, there's no justice. People are hungry, no jobs. But there's, there's that power that God has given to Nigeria to give people jobs, to give people food, make sure that there are roads, make sure that there's hospital, make sure there's, everything working because it was like that before in the in the in the in the sixties and seventies Nigeria was like London but because people that were on the seat then knew that they are there for the masses you are you are there for the masses not for your own self. but the kind of government we have now they are so proud they are they are they are into themselves they feed their pockets and so on and this is what Babylonian were doing when the king was there, he was so wicked, he was throwing down of people and doing bad. Now, God's judgment has come. And people, he said, when people see, they'll be horrified. Me, I'm praying that when judgment will come upon Nigeria, the things will not be so horrifying, that God will show us mercy just for the sake of a few people that are calling on the name of the Lord in sincerity, that God will show us mercy. So the lesson here is that when God has blessed us, like you said, the blessing is from him. It's not because we are good or we are righteous because we are the best. It's just a, a, a privilege, an opportunity. So we should realize that we are there to serve God no matter where we are. We should do our bidding, what God wants us to do. And for sure, we are due to the glory of God. And when people try to tell you you are doing so well, our response should be to God be the glory because you are doing it for God, not for any man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, man. Your words are very good. I hope you stand by there to say an opening prayer for us from those <laughs> in the internet. Mama Yad will say one here okay. for those okay, sir. in the church. God bless you. I love those words. And I love the way you um, applied the study locally in, in our local setting. You brought it to life, you know, what yes. happens at the national, even community, even in families, yes. in our individual yes. and personal lives. That is very, very important. We ask God for grace and may God give us this grace and give Amen. it to us in abundance in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We take just one more about Amen. the last um, passage there on what happened to Babylon. Revelation chapter 18, 1 to 2. Revelation Amen. chapter 18, um, 1 to 2. Does anybody want to read that? Revelation 18, 1 to 2. Wait, mommy, so that you can get the microphone. Yeah, thank you. Revelation 18, 1 to 2, good news version. After this, I saw another angel 
coming down out of heaven. He had great authority and his splendor brightened the whole heart. He cried out in a loud voice, she has fallen, great Babylon has fallen. She is now altered by demons and unclean spirits. All kinds of filthy and awful beds live in her. I think so too. Yes. Yeah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He said the same thing we're still talking about. Talking about um, God bringing down someone like all what we've explained. You know, a city that was exalted, a city that was looked up to initially, now brought down totally, you know. So this also talks about like what we've been saying. That when we are given, is there nothing that is given to us that is not given by God? And the same God that has given us those things have the ability to as well withdraw those things from us. And so the same God that blessed Babylon has decided now to withdraw such things, such glories from Babylon. So the place is nothing, you know. I think it's still the same thing. Thank you very much, ma'am. Any other comments on that before we go to the conclusion? Any other comments on that? Thank you very we, much. We, yes. I want yes. to say that uh, 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 pride goes before a fall. So we should pray that God should, uh, like David prayed. He said, search my heart, oh Lord, and see if there's any iniquity in me. The essence is that he wants to uh, deal with that iniquity. So we should check our lives and see whether there's any out of pride in us. Because his pride that brought uh, uh, the, the Nebuchadnezzar, he was so proud of himself. So may we ask God to deal with any pride in our lives, because that's the bane of this whole thing. Thank you very much, man. Any also, more contributions also, before we go yes, to conclusion? I also, I also think this should remind us about um, the book of um, Proverbs 30, verses uh, 7 to 9 where a prayer is given that God should not give me so much that I begin to... I we eat him. food and forget. Yeah. That's David, yes. David, yeah. And all that uh, I should not have enough and that begin to steal. So, so, <laughs> so I think uh, every nation, every person, every family, every individual should cry to God, should pray to God at all times to have moderation in his, his or her life. That mm. just give me... Keep me in the path, of, the path of moderation. Uh, mm. People, some people pray for wealth, and in the end, the wealth begins to com uh, to control them, and yes. they, they lose they lose the the, the path. So it's yes. a, it's, a, it's difficult. It's a, it's a very difficult prayer to pray to pray that you don't have too much. That's right. You don't lose control. The wealth does not begin to control you. Many things that are happening today. I don't want to go into the saddest things that are happening even in this Lagos. There's a limit uh, to which you should be acquisitive. And once you always pray for, to God to, for moderation, contentment. You a limit, and an element of contentment. So you don't go over that line, that imaginary line on the sand that you should not pray for so much. But if you get it, God forbid, when you get it, you can't go back. And you're always going to look for more. And, that, and look for more and more. And you never get, you never be contented, you never be happy. So we pray God for. Moderation in everything we do, particularly yeah. when it has to, has to do with yeah. human acquisitive uh, tendencies. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, architects, and thank you for your kindness to us, the priests here. You know what I'm talking about. I'm giving you an open um, thanks and appreciation and gratitude before God and before the people of God. May God continue to bless you. And thank you, Mommy Chingwe, for all your contributions. May God bless yes, you and bless his church in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So our conclusion says, Babylon was chosen by God as his tool to punish Judah and the surrounding nations. She later experienced God's judgment because she was found guilty of pride, self-sufficiency, and self-glorification. And these things, nobody who does them will get away from the wrath of God. And when you begin to think you can do it yourself or you can stand on your own, never self-sufficiency, self-glorification. Instead of giving glory to God, you are assuming the glory yourself, forgetting God who has given you the power and the enablement to do what you are able to do. This is very yeah. important. 
then God hates pride. Mommy Chi, when you said there, Proverbs 16, verse 18, pride goes before destruction, the haughty spirit before a fall. May God remove from us, uh, from us every spirit of pride in the name of Jesus. So Babylon became a symbol of self-indulgence, luxury, and wealth, seducing people into complacency. This will never be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Rejected by God. May God not reject us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Amen. our food for thought is the strength and weakness, rise and fall of any nation can only be determined by the Almighty God. And of course, this is true. He just peaked on Babylon and made it into a very strong nation and used them to discipline other nations, including his own favorite and beloved nation of Judah. So our memory verse, Jeremiah 27, verse 6 says, And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beast of the field, have I given him, have him also. And so we take our closing prayer now. Mommy Chin, will you pray for us? from the net, and please um, pray for this nation, Nigeria. I don't know what is happening to us. I think we are now Babylon. May <laughs> the fate of Babylon oh, not be our fate by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. His anger and wrath, let God remember his mercy. It pains me in my heart that perhaps I will not see Nigeria good. That is part of the reason why I came back to contribute my own little, not just saying, do it well, do it good, do it well, do it good. But there are lots of frustrations. Not that we don't have people who can put Nigeria on where Nigeria should be, but it is very, very difficult. You don't even know where to start. Those who are able to do that, nobody will give them any space or any chance for whatever mm -hmm. reason. So please pray for our nation. And after that, Mama Yad, please pray for the people of our Savior's church. God's blessings has continued to reign in this church that it may not enter into our head both priests and the lay people, that God will always make us humble to realize that whatever we are, what he has made us, we are still dependent on him. Mommy Chi, when you pray first, let us pray. Yes, sir. In, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word that have gone forth. Thank you because you made us to learn at your feet. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for expanding your word to us. We have heard your word and we have beating our chest and our hearts to say, Lord, in your mercy, forgive us as individuals, as, as families, as a nation, as a church. Because your word says that our righteousness is like a filthy rag before you, O oh Lord. Father, we're asking that, Lord, you will show mercy on Nigeria. Because mm -hmm. it's obvious that what is happening in Nigeria now is only by your sure mercies that Nigeria can stand. We have done all these terrible things that the, the people of Babylon did. We have done more than them even, Lord. Father, we are asking for your mercy for our rulers, for the subjects, for families. Lord. Father, in every way we have contributed to make Nigeria what it is today. Lord, we are asking for your mercy in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are praying that you give our rulers good sense of judgment, good sense of leadership, that they will know that they are there to deal, to heal the mass, to, to meet the needs of the masses. They are not there to amass well. They are not there to feed their pockets. Father, bring them to that sense of realization that this country would receive a new grace to be better. Father, look at people being killed everywhere, people being kidnapped in their homes. Father, so many evil things are happening in this land. That, Lord, our only hope is in you, Father. We are looking up to you that the day, Lord, you come and say, I've heard the prayers of this, like you said in Nineveh, people of Nineveh. But, Lord, we are asking that you be merciful, that you will not Amen. destroy everybody, that you will not show us your wrath, but rather your mercy will go forth and you deliver Nigeria and give us a new Nigeria in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, we pray that every one of us that have been in this Bible study, that our lives we receive a new turn that you remove every, every form of pride in us, every form of uh, mm. uh, selfishness, to know that you have blessed us so that you can use us to bless others. 
Do not let us feel proud of uh, whatever we have. Let our joy not be a function of what we have, but the joy that radiates from you, from knowing you, from serving you in the name of Jesus. Father Amen. Lord, thank you because we ask that we should not let this thing happen to us before we will learn a lesson. We have learned a lesson from the king of Babylon. We have learned a lesson from what happened to Babylon. May we never allow such to happen to us in Jesus' name. Father Lord, thank you because we know that for the sake of the elect in this country, you will show us mercy. People are praying, people are trusting, people are believing you. Father, show us mercy. Let your mercy stand up for us. Because if you look at what we are doing in this nation, we'll be worse than uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. But Lord, we are praying for your mercy. Let your mercy speak on our behalf. This is our prayer today. And we know you always answer our prayers. Thank you, merciful Father. Be thou exalted. Be thou glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord and, our, Lord and our God, we thank you. We appreciate you for our Savior Church. We thank you for thus far you've helped us. We thank you for your blessings, your numerous blessings with which you've blessed us. We thank you, Lord, for your enablement upon, oh God, the members of our Savior Church. We want to thank you for their lives. We want to thank you, oh God, with the resources with which you've blessed them. It is our prayer, oh God, that on a daily basis, you help us to know you better, help us to encounter you. We ask, oh God, you clothe us, oh God, with the garment of humility in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Take away from us the heart of stone. Take away from us, oh God, that pride. And we ask, oh God, help us to know you better and better. And we pray, Amen. oh God, help us to know that that which you've blessed us with. Lord, it is our duty, oh God, to propagate the Ghost for here on earth. Help us, O oh God, Amen. to use our resources, O oh God, to bless and to further your work here on earth. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray Amen. for those believing you for a good job opportunity in this place. We are asking, O oh God, you are either gives power to make what. We are asking for that divine connectivity right now. In the mighty name Amen. of Jesus, Amen. we are praying for those whose businesses, oh God, have been bankrupt. We ask, oh God, you are the God of restoration. You said yes. you restore to us the wasted years, the years, the palm worm, the years coronavirus, the years of eating. We are asking for restoration. Restore Amen. them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We want to pray for those, oh God, who are sick even in our midst. The Bible says yeah. healing is the bread of the children. And you said for your word, your word heals us. We declare their healing right now. Oh Lord, begin Amen. to touch them, the balm of Gilead, wherever they are. Those in their houses, those in the hospitals, those that have traveled for medical checkup, we pray. Their healing shall be a permanent one in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We ask, oh God, concerning the church, no member, but authority in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, when you see the blood, they shall pass over. We want to ask, oh God, even the new wave of coronavirus, none of our members will be victims. In the mighty Amen. name of Jesus, God, Amen. Members, they are also we declare and declare because the word says, Because I be on my body the mark of Christ, let no man trouble us. And so we declare, Let the mark of Christ begin to speak for our members Amen. wherever Amen. they wherever they journey to. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. one of the decree, oh God, concerning the remaining part of this year, disaster will not come near dwelling. Because Amen. the Bible tells us, Oh God, they say, When our foes, even our enemies, they rise up against us, they say they will just stumble and they shall fall. And so we yes, declare. Lord. In our midst, every member of our Savior Church, Lord, even our household, whenever the enemies will rise up against us, they will stumble and they will fall. In Amen. the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you, God, on a daily basis, that you come not to help us, and even as the year draws to an end, Lord, our health will not fail us. Our health Amen. will not disappoint us. In the Amen. mighty name of Jesus, we Amen. lift up the clergymen in this place before you. Lord, strength, the grace to serve you. Lord, oh God, empowerment from on high to do exploits for you, to touch yes. the lives of the people in the yes. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And we ask, oh God, on a daily basis, meet them at the point of our knees in the mighty name of Jesus. We Amen. cover this congregation with the blood of Jesus. We blood declare, Jesus. oh God, premature death will not be mentioned among us. Your word says in Psalm 91, verse 16, with long life you've satisfied us and you show us your yes, salvation. Lord. Longevity is our portion. Longevity Amen. is our heritage. And so, so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. We Amen. cover our lives with the blood of Jesus. Even blood as we come Jesus. for this uh, Bible study this evening, the Bible mm. says, Oh God, your word that you've spoken will not go back to you void. We are yes. praying, Oh God, will become, Oh God, written epistle of this word we've studied in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. May Amen. we see your light in our lives. For in Jesus' name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.
Father, we thank you for your children who have gathered, oh God, this evening to hear you. Thank you, God, for speaking to us. Thank you for interpreting these words in the power of your Holy Spirit. What we have heard this evening, oh God, would be like that seed that fell on good soil. That we yield increase in many fold, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold, and much more. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, God, for your children who have joined us through the internet. They will remain in good health in the name of Jesus. Amen. Nothing evil shall happen to them in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for your children present here in church. Your grace has brought them. They've been blessed to God. They will take yes. these blessings home. No man, no woman will remove, take away these blessings from them. In the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your mercy upon our lives. And thank you for the leadership of this church. We continue to pray for our vicar, the wife. And we continue to pray for our bishop, the wife. We pray for their ministries and all our callings and vocations where you have called us. Thank you for the men and women of goodness in this church who continue to support ministry here in different forms. That we never lack in the name of Jesus. Amen. The resources we never dry in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 We say the grace together. The grace of the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Amen. the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forever. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, everybody. On behalf of the Vika, I greet you again, and God will continue to be with you wherever you may be. His presence will never fail you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll see you again on Wednesday at our um, prayer meeting, and also same time Friday at our Bible study. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, Venerable. Thank you, Venerable. God bless you. God bless you too, Venerable. God bless you. You are soon now. God bless you. Hello. <laughs> is that uh, is that Ngozi? <laughs>